Hi, welcome back. Over the next two lessons, we're going to be focusing on the major muscles of the torso. So we're going to focus on the abdomen muscles and also the chest muscles. Download the audio file, listen to it, watch the video as often as you like. Make sure that you practice while you're working on your clients, talking to them, building that relationship, because business is so much about that relationship. Major Muscles of the Abdomen Rectus Abdominis The origin of the rectus abdominis is the pubic symphysis. The insertion of the rectus abdominis is the xiphoid process and costal cartilage of ribs 5 to 7. The action of the rectus dominus is to flex and lateral flex the lumbar spine, aid forced expiration and compress the abdomen. Rectus abdominis The external oblique and internal oblique. The origin of the external oblique muscles are the external surfaces of ribs 5 to 12. The insertion of the external oblique muscle is the anterior half of the iliac crest and the lineal alba. The origin of the internal oblique is the iliac crest, lumbar fascia and ingual ligament. The insertion of the internal oblique is the costal cartilage of ribs 7 to 10 and the linea alba. The action of the external and internal oblique is to compress the abdomen, flex, rotate and lateral flex the spine. The external oblique and internal oblique. Transversus abdominis. The origin of the transversus abdominis is the iliac crest, lumbar fascia, inguinal ligament, and the costal cartilage of ribs 7 to 12. The insertion of the transversus abdominis is the xiphoid process, linea alba, and pubic symphysis. The action of the transversus abdominis is to compress the internal organs and ribs and aid forced expiration. Transversus abdominis. The iliopsoas is made up of two muscles, the iliacus and the psoas major. The origin of the iliacus is the iliac fossa. The origin of the psoas major is the transverse processes of T12 to L5, lateral lumbar discs. The insertion of these muscles is the lesser trochanter of the femur. The 
the action of the iliopsoas muscles is to flex and laterally rotate the thigh, flex the lumbar spine, and anterior tilt of the pelvis. The iliacus and psoas major major muscles of the chest. Pectoralis major. The origin of the pectoralis major is the middle half of the clavicle, the edge of the sternum, and two to six costal cartilage. The insertion of the pectoralis major is the lateral lip of the bicipital groove of the humerus. The action of the pectoralis major is to adduct and medially rotate the humerus. Pectoralis major. Pectoralis minor. The origin of the pectoralis minor is ribs three to five. The insertion of the pectoralis minor is the coracoid process of the scapula. The action of the pectoralis minor is to depress and protract the scapula and to elevate the ribs to assist forced inspiration. Pectoralis minor. Coracobrachialis. The origin of the coracobrachialis is the coracoid process of the scapula. The insertion of the coracobrachialis is the medial aspect of the humerus. The action of the coracobrachialis is to help to stabilize, flex and adduct the humerus. Coracobrachialis. The external and internal intercostals. The origin of the external intercostal is the inferior border of the rib above. The insertion of the external intercostal is the superior border of the rib below. The action of the external intercostal is to elevate the rib during inspiration. The internal intercostal the origin of the internal intercostal is the superior border of the rib below. The insertion of the internal intercostal is the inferior border of the rib above. The action of the internal intercostal is to depress the rib cage during expiration. External intercostal, internal intercostal. Diaphragm. The origin of the diaphragm is anterior 
lumbar vertebrae 1 to 3, the xiphoid process, and inner 7 to 12 costal cartilages. The insertion of the diaphragm is the central tendon of the diaphragm. The action of the diaphragm is to expand the thoracic cavity during inspiration. Diaphragm.